Good evening, everyone. We'll go ahead and try and get started with number 70 in the 11th edition, and it's 67 in the 12th edition. Number 70 and 67. Do, do, mi, so, do, mi, do. My homely home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on, nor pain nor death can enter there, I feel like traveling on, yes I feel like traveling on, I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair, I feel like traveling on. Its glittering towers of sun outshine, I feel like traveling on. That heavenly mansion shall be mine, I feel Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly home is bright and fair. I feel like traveling on. Let others seek a home below. I Traveling on, which flames devour or waves overflow, I feel like traveling on. Yes, I feel like traveling on. I feel like traveling on. My heavenly. Next we'll sing it's number 72 in the 11th edition and 69 in the 12th edition. 72 and 69. <clears throat> There's a garden where Jesus is waiting. There's a place that is wondrously fair. For it goes with the light of His presence. Is the beautiful garden. Oh, mm -hmm. 
Savior awaits, and He opens the gates to the beautiful garden of prayer. Next, we'll sing number uh, 73 in the 11th edition, and it's number 70 in the 12th edition. 73 and 70.
to Thee, nearer to Thee, Lord, never to roam, nearer to Thee, Lord, a holy home. Next is number 74 in the 11th, and it's 71 in the 12th. 74 and 71. there, Brother Caleb. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, we're thankful for all those that are gathered there at uh, Meta Creek. 
leading us uh, in the hymns, uh, singing them for us. And uh, we're certainly thankful to the Lord for your effort in that. Uh, what a wonderful thought. And shout while passing through the air, farewell, farewell, sweet hour of prayer. Um, you know, we have a great God and um, our Savior Jesus Christ is alive. He is ruling today. Uh, and he's reigning. And one day he's going to return. And what a, what a day that will be. Um, so we look forward to that as we... Uh, move into the preaching part of the service this evening. Uh, it's good to see uh, preaching brethren with us. Uh, Elder Kerlock's there. We certainly appreciated his message last week from Psalm 1. Uh, it's good to see Elder Oot sitting up right there. Well, we're open trust. He said it's, uh, it's a slow going right now for him, uh, but uh, we're, we're praying the Lord would uh, restore his need to good health. Uh, it's good to have Elder Miller with us tonight. It's always good to see him. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for him and uh, Elder Oots and uh, Sister Sharon in his knee recovery. Uh, we want to remember Elder Stan Cato and Sister Vicki, Elder Joe Helms. Um, how is Elder Jamie Hancock doing? I talked to Brother Jamie uh, just this afternoon, just a few minutes ago. Uh, I think he rode his bike today. Um, I think about six. I can't remember how many miles, but doing better. And uh, he's uh, making good improvement. And uh, it's an adjustment, but he's making it. And it sounded real, real good. He called, called me to encourage me. So uh, I think he's doing well. Thank the Lord. Yeah, he's a, he's a faithful brother to encourage. That's for sure. So we're thankful uh, for the good report there with uh, uh, Brother Jamie. We just pray the Lord's continued blessing. Uh, with him uh, so we want to remember uh, that family uh, we want to continue to be in prayer for brother ned uh, sister laura gaskin and sister cynthia goodman we pray the lord's continued blessings upon them uh, sister anita's brother-in-law van is scheduled to start chemo treatment on the 24th of this month so we pray the lord's uh, mercy uh, with him uh, Sister Tammy Huntley is scheduled to have surgery tomorrow. So we pray that, uh, that the Lord would uh, bless that uh, surgery to uh, ease the pain and restore her. We just pray the Lord's blessing and with Brother Matt as well. Uh, we continue to be in prayer for uh, Sister Susan, uh, Brother Jean, Sister Virginia, Sister Ruth, and Sister Wanda. We continue to be in prayer for them. And Sister Leah, we... Well, or remembering her, we just pray the Lord's continued blessing with her and all would be well. Um, we want to remember uh, Sister Merlin. We continue to be in prayer for her. Uh, Brother Jonathan uh, from No Creek and Sister Merlin. Um, Sister Edna and her recovery from her surgery, as well as uh, Sister Angie had a, a nerve block procedure this past Monday. So uh, we hope and trust that uh, the Lord would heal them up. We continue to be in prayer for this country. We pray the Lord's uh, continued mercy and grace upon us. Uh, we ask the Lord's blessing on uh, the military and first responders. Uh, we, uh, we ask the Lord's blessing on uh, his church, the church of the living God, which is the pillar and the ground of truth here in this world. Uh, we ask the Lord to continue to strengthen us uh, that we would continue to stand and proclaim the truth as it, give, as it is given to us uh, in the word of God. Uh, we pray that uh, that would be our rule of uh, measure, and we would trust in it, and uh, the Lord would bless us not to waver. Uh, every one of us has this natural mind, and we think we can make some things better, uh, but we can't. We can't make anything that God has done better because God has made it as good as he wants it to be. Um, so uh, let, us, um, let us rest in that assurance and trust in it. So um, is there anyone else with uh, Brother Joe, uh, Brother Gary, Brother James? Uh, do y'all have anyone you'd like to add to this uh, list?
Okay. Um, well, we'd like to have a hymn as a way of opening. We're going to ask Brother Gary if he'd open the service with prayer, followed by Elder Miller to uh, preach for us. And we just pray uh, the gift of the Holy Spirit uh, would stir them up uh, in, in prayer uh, and in preaching. And that same power, that same spirit that stirs them up, we hope and trust will stir us up that we would receive uh, the things uh, that they would bring forth in prayer and in preaching. And um, so, uh, Brother Caleb, what number do you have? Uh, Elder Eddie, I've turned to number 75 in the 11th edition, and it is 148 in the 12th edition. 75 and 148. Prayer is the source and seer desire of Gary, we pray the Spirit upon you in prayer. Good to see you tonight. Good being here, brother. I surely ask each of you to pray for me as we look together to the Lord. And we truly do need the Lord to teach us how to pray, to be able to speak words that would be pleasing in the ears of Almighty God and the benefit to the Lord's little children as well, and how much we need Him in every area of worship. And, uh, it's just so good to have such a mighty God to lean upon yeah. him and to depend upon who is able to do for us that which we could not imagine. And uh, please pray for me as we look together for a little while. Okay. Merciful and gracious Heavenly Father, we do thank thee for this another opportunity and privilege, Lord, to come before thy presence, to meet in thy name, to worship thee, O Lord, to lift up our voices together in song, to sing from our hearts praise unto thee. We thank thee, O Lord, for the hunger and thirst that thou hast given us, for the desire that thou hast placed in our hearts for us to attend and be a part of this meeting. We thank thee, O Lord, for Meta Creek Church, for planting it there, and for their faithfulness, O Lord, for us to be able to be here tonight. Uh, to be able to gather to worship thee, the true and living God, in spirit and in truth. And, O oh Lord, we do ask that thou would manifest thy presence among us. We know that thou art everywhere present and nowhere absent. And, Lord, there's nowhere we could go in our lives to be out of thy watch care, be out of thy presence. But, O oh Lord, how much we need thee tonight to feel thee, to 
see thy presence and see thee with an eye of faith and to hear thee, O Lord, speak to us from thy word. And O Lord, just help us to realize that we are not alone in this old world and have never been. But the one who has promised to never leave us nor forsake us is truly with us tonight. And Lord, just be with all those that have been mentioned here tonight and each and every circumstance, each and every trial, each and every trouble or every problem. Lord, we know that we cannot acquaint thee with anything and our prayers are not for that purpose, but they are that which thou hast told us to do as we come and let our requests be made known unto thee and we speak unto thee, O Lord. We just ask that if it is according to thy will, O Lord, that thou would lift up these dear ones and supply just what they stand in need of. And Lord, we thank thee that we have such a great God as thou art to be able to call upon tonight, and that we can come to thy throne of grace and leave with peace in our hearts, knowing that we are in thy watch care and in thy keeping. Dear Lord, we ask that thou would bless this meeting tonight to thy glory and thy honor and thy praise. I thank thee for Brother Joe. I thank thee, dear Lord, for blessing him with a gift. And we ask, dear Lord, that thou would just bless him tonight to use that gift that thou hast given him. We give thee the glory for that. To thy honor and thy praise and thy glory, that thou would bless us tonight, O Lord, with ears to hear, eyes to see, and a heart to understand the glorious truth, and that our dear brother might rightly divide the word of truth and preach in power and in demonstration of thy spirit, and that we might be fed, dear Lord, from thy bountiful hand, a good news from a far country is like cold water to a thirsty soul. And, oh, Lord, how many times we come thirsting and hungering and have found uh, at, the, at the house of God just what we stood in need of in a way of a preaching way. Dear Lord, we just thank thee for the songs that we were unable to sing tonight that spoke of thy truth. We thank thee for the dear ones that so faithfully lead, lead these us in these hymns, and dear Lord, what a blessing it is to hear them and to be singing here in our own homes and feel a part of it. And dear Heavenly Father, we ask that the preaching might be such that we feel thy manifest presence as if thou art speaking to us, O Lord, from thy word. We know that if the truth is preached tonight, it'll be Jesus Christ and him crucified the same yesterday, today, and forever, and that that message of grace that sounds so wonderful in the past will sound good tonight. And, oh, Lord, may we hear it over and over again. May it be an encouragement to us. And, dear Heavenly Father, we can't thank Thee for all of the many blessings that Thou showered down upon us throughout the days of our life. But we do want to make an effort, oh, Lord, to just thank Thee as much as we can for that which Thou hast done. I thank Thee for these dear ones that I see here online Tonight, those that I see the names of as well as the faces of some, Lord, I just ask thy blessing upon them. May, may brotherly love continue tonight, O Lord. May we feel uh, the love for thy little children because we have a love for thee and because thou hast first loved us, O Lord. Help us to operate in that love in a way to bring honor and glory unto thy name. And, O oh Lord, I just thank Thee for the blessings of the church. I thank Thee for the blessings of the gospel and the truth. I thank Thee, O oh Lord, for allowing me to see and know and understand to some degree these things. And pray, O oh Lord, that that would help us all just to grow in grace and knowledge of the truth. Lord, continue to be with all the ministers that are here and others that are going through difficult times. Lord, supply what they stand in need of. And Lord, be with our land and nation we, in such perilous times in this world, but we're not alone. We know that thou art on, thou on thy throne, and Lord, help us to look to thee to keep us and keep our land, keep our nation, Lord, keep our leaders. Lord, just provide what we need, correct us as we need correction, and lead us and direct us in the path that we ought to go for thy name's sake and for thy glory. And Lord, we we just thank thee again that thou has had anything to do with us whatsoever. We understand that we are not deserving of the least of thy favor. And yet, O oh Lord, thou has been so good to us. Has called us out of nature's darkness into thy marvelous light, given us a hope, given us a sweet trust in thee, given us an understanding and a knowledge of what thou has done for us in part. Lord, just help us to understand it better and better. May it become more and more 
real to us. We thank thee for Brother Eddie. Ask thy continued blessing upon him. Just continue to watch over us, we pray. Be with this meeting tonight. Be especially with Brother Joe as he comes before us. Just open up his mouth to preach the gospel. May it be to thy glory and thy honor and thy praise. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. I'm thankful to the Lord for that prayer. Elder Miller, it's a pleasure to have you with us tonight. We just pray the Lord's blessing upon you as you embark to uh, once again bring the, the gospel to us. So God bless you, Brother Joe. Thank you, Brother Eddie. It's good to see you and good to see everybody. I'm particularly happy Brother Gary's back there and dressed up and seated in his kitchen and back online with us. And I know he's uh, he's got a road ahead that uh, I don't think he mentioned it. He's going to begin uh, therapy tomorrow at the, uh, trying to think how exactly to put it. It'll be outside the home. He'll be going to a, a place for therapy to start tomorrow. So, uh, Brother Gary, I'm sure we'll all keep you in our prayers as you start to uh, go through that process. Uh, I think tonight, Brother Eddie remarked at the beginning, and Brother Gary remarked in his prayer that uh, how often we need to be reminded, and uh, I'm speaking of, my, of myself now, that uh, it's very, very easy uh, to just take things for granted, particularly things that we've heard and, and believed and thought of uh, for many, many, many years, that uh, we can just take those for granted and and. Uh, they, they will not have the impact on us that they should have. But Brother Eddie mentioned at the beginning, and Brother Gary mentioned that our Lord and Savior is alive. <laughs> That's something I know we all know, but uh, the, it's an impossibility to overemphasize the importance of that. And because he's alive, and because he's alive forevermore, uh, I'll say to you, this gathering tonight, not in vain. Our faith is not in vain. Our prayers are not in vain. Uh, our fellowship with one another is not in vain. Uh, and the preaching of the gospel is not in vain, regardless of how weak a vessel the Lord may call to do that. Uh, uh, the excellency, the power is not of, <laughs> certainly not of myself or any other man, and lest any of us would dare be exalted. Our sole purpose is to glorify our Lord. And our labor, one more thing, as it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I think I mentioned this Sunday, uh, wherefore be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. So I'm thankful to see all of you tonight. Uh, I, I struggle to think of, uh, as I begin to think this afternoon, I had a pretty good idea from a remark that was passed on to me Sunday. I thought there's a pretty good possibility <laughs> Brother Eddie may call upon me tonight. I see folks grinning. They know what I'm talking about. But I thought tonight uh, the main thought on my mind is something I would just consider to be one of the basics. And uh, going back to my very first remark, uh, just because we've heard something many times, uh, and just because we're even established, Scripture says established in the present truth, that doesn't mean that we don't need to go back over uh, the fundamental things of the Scripture again. And tonight I'm thinking about particularly uh, the total depravity and the total inability of man. <laughs> and there's so many other truths that are directly and intimately connected to that. Uh, that they all stand together. Uh, what we would consider to be basics, a lot of the Lord's people and a lot of people uh, that may be searching for the truth among the Lord's people. Uh, I, I can look back in my own life, what we consider to be uh, just basic fundamental doctrines and truth of the scripture uh, are considered by many people to be very mysterious and the deep things of God, uh, if they will accept them at all for what they say. 
I mentioned also Sunday to the congregation uh, a verse out of the 31st chapter of the book of Isaiah uh, where the Lord was uh, through Isaiah the prophet. He was rebuking the children of Israel and said, Woe unto them that go to Egypt for their help. And I thought in connection with this doctrine of the total depravity and the total inability of man, we don't need to go out into the world and on any other truth that we believe. We don't need to go searching uh, for the experts of the world. Uh, we simply can believe what God has inspired to be written down and preserved for us. I've made this statement many times. The greatest textbook of psychology or understanding the nature of man is certainly the Bible. The Bible gives the true and the only fully true picture of what mankind is by nature. And we believe the Bible fully and surely establishes that man by nature, as he is born into this world, generation after generation, going clear back to Adam after he fell in the garden. There's none good, no, not one, none righteous, no, not one, none that seeketh after God. There's no fear of God before their eyes. Every man, woman by nature has a carnal mind that is at enmity against God, not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. And when it says the carnal mind is at enmity against God, I understand that word enmity to be the same word. Uh, it's in a great struggle, or you could even say it's at war with God. It's God's enemy, the natural man and the natural mind. That's in the third chapter of Romans. No, that's in the eighth chapter of Romans. But in the fifth chapter of Romans, it tells us there that when we were yet enemies, Christ died for us. Now, total depravity of man means that this fallen nature affects every part of us. <laughs> it affects us in every way. And we have to take it to its logical conclusion, not by logic, but by scripture again. I didn't phrase that well. The scripture teaches us that natural man is dead in trespasses and in sins. And if we believe that man is fallen in every aspect of his nature and that he's dead in trespasses and in sins, let's break that down briefly. What's that mean to be dead in trespasses and in sins? It means to be separated from any spiritual life to be separated from spiritual life with or from God. That's about as good a definition as I can come up with right now. No life. There's no spiritual life in one unless and until they have been born, quickened, regenerated by the Spirit of God. There's no understanding of spiritual things. Paul lays that out plainly. In the second chapter of 1 Corinthians, when he said, The natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, neither can he know them, for they are spiritually discerned. Foolishness, I left part of that out. For they are foolishness unto them, neither can they know them, for they are spiritually discerned. So if we believe, and we certainly should believe, in the total depravity, the fallen nature, the, uh, the state of spiritual death that all the human race is in unless they've been quickened by the Spirit of God. If we believe in that, then it's an absolute necessity that God move and that God move first. And that salvation, as I always say, and as many of you say, that salvation is of the Lord. <laughs> we have no spiritual understanding. We have no spiritual life. We have no desire for spiritual things. Ephesians chapter 2, 
I'll read it if I can't get it exactly. Uh, but we know it starts out and it says, and you hath he quickened, which were dead in trespasses and in sins. And there he says, in times past, you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. In other words, man by nature lives his life under the great influence, not only of the world around him and what the world thinks is right. And the scripture says of that, there's a way that seemeth right unto a man, but the ends thereof are the ways of death. But it says, even according to the prince of of the power of the air, which is speaking there of Satan, the devil, that old serpent, the tempter, many names given to him in the scripture. In other words, one way of putting it, a natural man a pretty much just goes whichever way his own nature, his own lust leads him, pretty much without even possibly being aware of it, uh, just being led about uh, in the paths of sin and in the paths of temptation, walking according uh, to the devil's bidding. I think it's a clear, fair way to say it. But he said, you hath he quickened. And he said, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past. Now some, some folks, at a young age, were called out of nature's darkness, uh, quickened by the Spirit of God. Some persisted in that longer. Uh, and when we talk about the total depravity of man, we have to delineate the fact uh, that, uh, I don't know how else to put it, some are worse than others. <laughs> All are fallen. All are sinners. Some certainly go much further and to greater depths. Uh, in that evil and in the sin uh, of nature and in the sins of the flesh and in other sins and crimes and depravities that I won't bother to list right now, though there are many, many of them. I counted up one time in the Apostle Paul's writings, in the book of Romans, uh, in the book of uh, Galatians, uh, in the book of Second Timothy, I believe, I counted up where the Apostle Paul listed the sins of the flesh. And I made a list of them one time several years ago, and I counted them up. And if I'm not mistaken, I think the Apostle Paul listed 51 different sins of the flesh. Now, we know what the big ones are, but there's a whole lot of what we call the little ones in there too. <laughs> and that's, uh, that's really not looking according to the truth to look at it that way. I will say this, certainly there are some sins that have a greater impact and impact more people that affect the family, that affect the children, that affect the home, the marriage, or maybe the neighbors, or whatever the case may be. Certainly some have a greater impact. But I think what Paul said there, and I will read this, I think this is in Colossians, the third chapter. I want to refer to this just briefly. Starting in verse 5, he says, Mortify therefore your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetous, covetousness, which is idolatry. And evil concupiscence, as I understand it, means lust. For which things sake, the, the for which things sake, the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. In the which ye also walk some time when ye lived in them. Going back again to the total inability, total depravity of man, uh, before being quickened by the Spirit of God. And Paul, back in Ephesians again, I missed a point I wanted to make. It said, and they were by nature. Ye, that includes us, <laughs> were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. I'll tell you here right now, God's people, though they walk 
along with, right beside, and in the midst of the children of wrath, and were by nature the children of wrath, had the same fallen sinful nature, yet <laughs> again by the power and the, the saving grace of God, they never were children of wrath. They may have appeared to be so, and we, I, I can tell you for certain, uh, without going into any detail, I can tell you at one time in my life, I'm sure I appeared to be one of them as well. Uh, uh, children of wrath, even as others. Yet God's people were never the children of wrath. <laughs> because before God ever created the heavens and the earth, spoke this world into existence, out of his great love and mercy, which Paul describes in that same chapter. But God, who's rich in mercy for his great love, wherewith he loved us. <laughs> that great love, that grace, that mercy was already before he spoke the world into existence. He had already in his electing love placed that grace and mercy upon an innumerable number of Adam's children yet to be born in this world, chose them in Christ. And though they would go for a time walking as the children of wrath, even as others, yet in the mind and purpose and in the certainty of God's power, the appointed time will come and has come or will come for every one of them in this world, however much they may seem to be walking along among the children of wrath at God's appointed time. He will send forth his spirit and they will be quickened. <laughs> They'll be made alive in Christ Jesus. Take part in his resurrection. As, as Paul puts it there. Got off point. I want to try to get back. So Paul's saying mortify. Put away these what we would consider to be big sins. Fornication. Uncleanness. Covetousness. Which is idolatry. Maybe I'll spend just a second on that. <laughs> we covet what somebody else has. We spend our lives always wanting something we don't have. Uh, we concentrate on our desires, uh, on obtaining everything that we would like to have in this life. But covetous, covetousness speaks particularly uh, of they have that, and I don't know why I don't have it. And if they have it, I ought to have it too. And how come they've got it and I don't? And we can become so concentrated on obtaining something, whatever that may be, whether it be a material possession or whether it be some kind of a worldly honor, whatever the case may be, that that becomes an idol to us. You know what? Idolatry didn't die out hundreds of years ago. And there, and there are world religions today that actually still practice uh, actual idolatry that actually still make and bow down before idols. But idolatry can take many, many forms, brothers and sisters, as you all know. And the simplest definition of it, one I heard years ago, and as good as any I ever heard, anything, anything whatsoever that we put above our God, that we put between us and God, <laughs> anything that we make more important, in our lives than our Lord and our Savior and our God and Father, then that becomes to us an idol. But then Paul said, these big things, put them away. But he said in that verse 8, but now ye also put off all these. Now, this gets down closer to home for me. I won't accuse you, but I'll confess to you this gets closer to home on some of these for me. But now ye also put off all these, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, 
after the image of him that created him. So it's not just the uh, the big things, but the little things, and they're not small. <laughs> they're not little. That's a misconception. How about anger? What Paul tell them in Ephesians? Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. We give place to the devil, folks. We can start out being a little bit aggravated. And next thing you know, just be in a full-blown rage. And when we're in a rage, we're completely out of control. And we'll do things and we'll say things that we may five minutes later give anything in this world if, if we had submitted to the Lord and not given in to that anger that began the whole process. Wrath, malice. <laughs> That's one I had to watch. There are a lot of things that take place in the world. We talked about, Brother Gary mentioned the nation uh, in his prayer and in his remarks. Many things taking place right now in this nation. Uh, I'll be honest with you, they anger me to even see or to hear about. We have to be careful, though. We know what malice is. Malice is wishing something bad will happen to somebody else. Hoping, well, I sure hope they get what's coming to them, and I hope they get what they deserve. That's malice. So taking delight, saying, well, I see their chickens finally came home to roost on them. An evil desire. The desire to see something bad happen to somebody else. That's what malice, maliciousness is. Now, I'll add this in. We do know this as well. We do know the scripture says, For God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And I can tell you, and we're also told this as well. In the 12th chapter of Romans, we're told there, Bends not yourselves. And for vengeance is mine, saith the Lord, and I will repay. Not our place to venge ourselves, not our place to take delight in somebody else's trouble either. But yet at the same time, we can be certain God is not mocked. And just because God is long suffering, and just because it has not pleased God yet at this time to pour out his judgment and pour out his wrath, that doesn't mean the day won't come of when he will most certainly do that. We know there is a day of judgment. We know there's a day of wrath that is coming. But think of this, folks. I hope this blesses you to think about it as I say it because it blesses me to think about it. Even though we were children of wrath, even as others, even though now we can say, as the Apostle Paul said, and if we don't feel this way, it's simply because, according to the scriptures, we're deceiving ourselves. But Paul said of himself, and you think of the Apostle Paul, in my mind, the Apostle Paul probably walked as close and lived as close uh, to the Lord God and the Lord Jesus Christ as any man that walked on this earth. And he said, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. And he said, For that which I would, I do not. That which I would not, that do I. I find then a law present, that when I would do good, evil is present with me. Now, try to move on to the point that I've never gotten to. I talked about the total depravity of man. Man by nature's dead in trespasses and in sins. But as the Lord told Nicodemus in the third chapter, a book of John. He talked there about the wind, the wind blowing, blowing where it listed. He said you can't can't see where it's coming from, can't see where it's going. 
but you can see the effects of it. Paraphrasing, it said, and so is everyone that's born of the Spirit. There will come a time without fail in the life of every one of those whom God has loved with an everlasting love. Though they appear right now, they may appear right now to be the children walking as the children of wrath, even as others. There will come a time in the life of every single one of those whom God marked out before he ever spoke this world into existence, marked out and were given unto his son, were given to his charge to come into this world to redeem and to save them with an everlasting salvation. The time will come sometime during their natural life that they'll hear the voice of the Son of God as it says in the fifth chapter of John, for the hour is coming and now is when the dead shall hear the voice of the Son of God, and they that hear shall live. <laughs> I have to go back to this example. I go back to it so often. I think about it a lot, probably as much, if not more, than any other passage of Scripture, certainly in the Gospels, when our Lord was crucified, when he was lifted up between heaven and earth when he was crucified there between two thieves. And that's just something that uh, I don't ever get tired of hearing about or thinking about. And there was one thief on the left hand and one on the right hand. And at the beginning of the account, they both railed on him. <laughs> they both mocked him. There were a number of folks gathered around mocking the Lord as he hung there. Said he saved others himself he cannot save. If thou be of the Son of God, or if thou be the King of the Jews, thou be the Christ, come down from the cross. And it said those two thieves, they railed on him. They mocked him as they hung there beside him. <laughs> and then we're told nothing else. We're not told we're not told that the Lord directly addressed that thief or said anything to him prior to this. This is a good an illustration of the work of the Spirit of God in quickening a one who was dead in trespasses and sins that I think you'll find anywhere in the Scripture. And we see that just all of a sudden, in my mind, suddenly. That thief said, Lord, uh, when he said to the other thief, he said, we're here justly, but this man's done nothing amiss. How did he recognize that? And then he said, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. <laughs> he had he'd been taught and he learned an awful lot in a very short time, it seems to me, folks. All of a sudden, this one he'd railed on, now he was calling him Lord. And then he said, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. He knew that he had a kingdom. He knew that as the Lord Jesus Christ, certainly I think it was evident that they were all three going to die. I don't think anybody ever survived crucifixion. Uh, if they did, as with these two thieves, if they didn't die in a certain amount of time, they came along and broke their legs. And then they would suffocate to death. That was how it was designed to work. He knew Christ was going to die. But he said, remember me when thou comest in to thy kingdom. He knew he wasn't going to stay dead. He knew that he had a kingdom that he was going to come into. Now, how in the world, folks, could that be other than by the operation of the Spirit of God? And the Lord said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee today, Shalt thou be with me in paradise. There we see one, I believe, quickened in the last little bit of his life. He didn't have much life left. I've never made a practice since I've been trying to I even hesitate to call myself an old Baptist preacher. I really do, folks. Other people kind of put that title upon me. 
But ever since I've been trying to speak in his name, I've been called on to officiate at several funerals, as I know Brother Eddie has, and I know Brother Gary has, and I know we all do. All elders are called upon for that task, and sometimes we're called upon. I've been called upon to have several funerals of folks that I never met in my entire life and didn't know a thing on earth about them. Someone in the family may have requested. Uh, sometimes they just said the person, someone in the family said, I want an old primitive Baptist preacher there for my funeral. And I've gone. And I've never made it a practice. And I hope never to. I, if I'm in my right mind, I won't. I've never stood before a congregation at a funeral service. and said, and I've heard this. <laughs> I've sat in the congregation and heard this more than once. Now, there's no hope for them. There's no hope for them. They wouldn't accept the Lord, and we know where they are. There's no hope for them, but there's hope for you if you'll do something. That's not a practice that I'll ever follow. How do we know, folks? How do we know that the Spirit of the Lord may not have intervened uh, in their life in their last moments of life. I'm thankful to know that power, as it says in the Psalms 60th something, I can't get it exactly, Psalm 60 something, says their power belongeth unto God. God has the power. God had the will. He sent his son into this world. The fact that we've been quickened, made alive, uh, raised up with Christ, made together to sit in heavenly places. The fact that we've been regenerated, washed, sprinkled with the blood of Christ, uh, quickened, made alive, all those different terms refer to the one and the same experience. It's all tied together with the fact that the Son of God died for us put away our sins, was buried, and rose again for our justification so that we stand before God the Father in Christ as though we had never sinned, declared righteous, <laughs> unrighteous, and corrupt, and evil, and wicked as we were. Yet he hath declared his righteousness and imputed that and put that on our account and by virtue of what the Son of God has done. <laughs> oh, where sin abounded, it says grace did much more abound. And that's who we're to preach to, as my brothers here know and all of you know. We could preach, we could pray, I, I could start today and I could go nonstop as long as my breath and voice would hold up. And if one has not yet been born or has not been born of the Spirit of God, has not been quickened, has not been given ears to hear, they are not going to hear it, folks. In the book of Revelation, isn't it? Several times. John the, uh, John the Apostle writing by the Spirit of God, he that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Aren't you thankful tonight? <laughs> I feel like the least deserving. Uh, some of you I've met, some of you I know well, some of you I know only by name, but I still not knowing a thing about you. I can put myself in any group of people and I, I, I will say, as Paul said, the Lord is my witness that what I'm saying now is how I truly feel. I feel to be the least deserving of any of God's blessings, of anybody that I know, folks. But it has nothing to do with what we deserve. <laughs> Think of that old hymn. I don't know if you've all sung it. I quote it from time to time. I think it's in the old school hymnal. I know it's in a little, the old book we use sometimes. I know it's in the old school hymn. It says, show pity, Lord. Oh, Lord, forgive. Let a repenting sinner live. And it has a line that says, and if my soul were sent to hell, 
thy righteous law approves it well. God would have been perfectly just, a perfectly righteous and perfectly holy to let each and every one of us continue on in a totally depraved state, <laughs> none good, nothing good about us by nature. He'd have been perfectly just to let us continue on uh, in that state. But again, as Paul put it, but God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when ye were dead, hath quickened us together with Christ, raised us together, made us sit in heavenly places. By grace ye are saved. And it says that in the ages to come, folks, he might show his exceeding riches and kindness in Christ Jesus to us. So if we've been raised out of this old nature, Something has taken place. We've been made aware that we're a hopeless and a helpless sinner in need of something and someone outside of ourselves. <laughs> we can struggle. We can turn over a whole forest full of new leaves. We can do all kinds of things. Make a new start. Make a new start uh, once and twice and three times or many times beyond that. But it is he which hath begun a good work in you that he'll perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. Though we were, uh, <laughs> though we were without God, without hope in this world, yet God sending his son in the likeness of sinful flesh, not in sinful flesh, for he had no sin, but he came in the likeness, just as all God's people were appeared to be children of wrath, even as others. But he came in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, condemned sin in the flesh. And it's an absolute certainty. He not going to miss a one of them, folks. The Spirit of the Lord sometime will touch every, every single one whom God loved, whom God chose, whom Christ died for. The Spirit of God. <laughs> he will, at some point during their natural life, that they'll be visited and they'll be raised up. They'll uh, be given the gift of eternal life they'll be given eyes to see and ears to hear and i'll go so far i'm closing with this but i'll go so far as to repeat what i've said and uh many times i believe every born again child of god has received a gift of faith whether they can express that how uh great a degree of that uh i can't say that whether they're ever, ever able to express that to anybody or not, I can't say that either. But I believe that the gift of faith is in their heart by the quickening power of the Spirit of God. All right, I don't know where to close. I'm just going to close with that. But <laughs> oh, Thanks be unto God for his unspeakable gift. He didn't leave us in this state we were in. Though we'll continue to struggle on, as I said. First John said, if any man says he had no sin, he deceiveth himself, and the truth not any. Yet, the big difference, folks, uh, it grieves us. <laughs> it grieves us, and, and I, I hope it will never cease. Said I'd quit, and I haven't. I apologize. I want to say this kind of as a practical a reminder, a warning. It's possible. I believe I've witnessed it, and I imagine some of you have. I think it's possible for one who's been quickened by the Spirit of God uh, to persist in disobedience and sear their conscience, it says, as with a hot iron, uh, until their conscience is not tender anymore. 
uh, and they be can become hardened. And that's a fearful place to be in. They're in no danger, no danger whatsoever. <laughs> They're not in any danger of eternal separation from God. But there's a danger of being separated here in this life, being a castaway, uh, being, uh, I would say, of all men, most miserable. I don't think there's a more miserable condition that a human can be in on this earth than to be a quickened child of God and to persist uh, walking away from God in a way uh, the, to bring the chastisement of God upon them and, and to become so seared, so hardened in their conscience uh, that for all practical purposes in this life be a castaway. That's a fearful thought. I remember Brother Gary many years ago. Might have been the first time I ever heard you preach up at Brother Stan's church at Craigsville. I'd say it's been 20 years, maybe, maybe longer. Brother Gary closed out with a way of warning, which is what I'm trying to do now. Brother Gary made this remark. I don't know if he'll remember it or not, but oh, he said, that's why the Lord told us to watch and pray. Unless you enter into temptation. <laughs> We're to be watchful, folks, not just drift along, not paying attention. We're to be watchful. For Gary said there have been better folks than us have fallen. I, I remember that quite well. And that's a warning I haven't forgotten. We're to be watchful as we go through this life. But that we would, as I said at the beginning, uh, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. Not that we can obtain his favor by that. We've obtained his favor freely by his grace through the redemption that's in Christ Jesus. But knowing what God has done for us, brothers and sisters, what a great debt do we owe to him to try by his grace working in us to do our very best to follow after him in a way that pleases him and in a way that brings glory to his name. I apologize. <laughs> I've never been on here. I haven't made this apology and I don't guess I'll ever get past it. I apologize for going from one thing to another. That just, that just seems to be the way it goes with me. But I hope tonight that, uh, I hope tonight you can at least be thankful for the scripture which tells us that though we were dead, he's quickened us and he's given us everlasting life. <laughs> and that life, when we're made alive, that's the very life of Christ dwelling in us by his spirit. Christ in you, the hope of glory. All right, good night and God bless each one of you. <clears throat> thank the lord for that uh i think it was all braided together brother joe uh i think it uh it, i was blessed to hear it and i appreciate the message and it is um it's good to well, it's good to hear it it feeds the soul and it is a warning uh, to the lord's people you know, David said in the 51st Psalm, it says, cast me not away from thy presence and take that thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. Oh, Lord, pray for us that we wouldn't get in that uh, shipwrecked condition. Um, you know, As um, corruptible as this flesh is, it's, I mean, it's, I don't know what's the word. I can't think of the, the right word to describe the, the, the goodness that we have. As Brother Joe closed out, we have the spirit of God in us that sinneth not. We sin with this flesh, but not with that spirit. Uh, so, uh, 
And let the inward man rule. Let him rule in our hearts and in our minds. God bless you, Brother Joe. A uh, lot to think about, to read on and meditate about. So uh, praise God for that. Uh, Brother Caleb, what number do you have? Already I've turned to number 79 in the 11th edition and it's 75 in the 12th. 79 and 75. Spirit of God, send upon my heart, wind it from earth through all its pulses, Amen. So we're thankful uh, for the uh, the blessings of the Lord tonight and the moving of the Spirit and the
aren't you thankful that uh, these things that uh, Brother Joe is, these spiritual things that he's brought forth have made sense to us. And we've uh, had an ear to hear and an eye to see that we may spiritually discern these things. That's not the natural man, but that's this inner man that we have being born again of the spirit. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's worth listening to the gospel just to, just to feel that and have the sense that you are a child of God knowing that you can rejoice in these spiritual things. So Lord willing will be, uh, have service third Sunday coming up at Meta Creek this week and, uh, be in prayer for that as well as, uh, all the churches, we just pray the Lord's continued blessings upon us. Um, God is able He's able to move amongst, you know, he's, he's able to move out there in the world, but he's also able to move within us in our congregations uh, that we can just uh, be lifted upon the mountain. So uh, we be, have prayer for that, be in prayer for that, that the Lord would strengthen and continue to just um, make us make us feel good to be in the house of God, you know? Does anyone have any other announcements? Um, Elder Eddie, uh, New Hope is having their 100th anniversary uh, this Saturday at 10.30 a.m. Is it 10 or 10.30? 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. Um, down there in South Carolina, New Hope. Thank you, Brother Caleb. Be in prayer for that and attendance if you can. I'm sure they'd love to have it. Anything else? Brother Eddie, Bethel yes. Primitive Baptist Church in Vienna, Virginia will be having their annual union meeting this Saturday. And I uh, know they'd love to see any and all that could be with them. We'll also be Zooming that meeting, the Lord willing. And that'll all be right. beginning Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. Bethel. Pray Washington. the Lord's blessing you there. Anything else? Ask Elder Kerlock if he's uh, available to uh, have prayer for us. Dismiss this service. Please bow with me. Our Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the time that we've been able to spend in thy house. Thank thee for the things which we have heard. Thank thee for saving us and redeeming us, realizing that there was nothing within us that would merit thy love, but that it was all by grace. Lord, we ask that thou would bless us to repent from sin and follow thee, realize that we are thine and not our own anymore. Lord, please help us to live that way Please be with those sick and afflicted. Please be with the meetings that are upcoming and bless thy church in this world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother James, Brother Gary, and Brother Joe. We're thankful to the Lord for you. We appreciate you very much. So uh, may God continue to bless you. It's good to see each one of you this evening. We love you, and uh, we look forward to seeing you again. Be in prayer for us been a wonderful meeting tonight. Thank the Lord for every bit of it. And uh, appreciate the preaching, Brother Joe. And good singing and sweet prayers. God bless you all. We love you. Yeah. God bless. I'm happy to see a couple more of our West Virginians on here with us tonight, too. <laughs> Brother Larry and Sister Connie, good to see you. Lord bless each one of you. Good to see all of you. Yeah. Love you, Brother Joe. Thank you for letting us have Brother Steve and Sister Mary on Sunday. <laughs> we, 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 we didn't let them. We, 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 we. Well, okay, I'll rephrase that. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs>
I'll take care. Yeah. See you. Yeah, yeah, you too. You too. God bless you all. Good night, everyone. Hey, brother. Good night. Take care. Bye, brother. Good to see you all. Hope you all have a good night. Hope to see you all soon.